So with any wood project, you usually have knots and you got to patch those. But the wood putty that you, you get at the store, it's water-based and takes a long time to dry and it cracks. So I like to use Bondo. And um, normally you just put some pigment in it and you can match it to the uh, wood. But this time I'm going to put some surfboard pigment in it and uh, make it bright so it'll pop out of there. Okay, I've got my sample piece put together here and I've got the first edge taped off and dammed up. There's the colored Bondo patch and I'm gonna pour uh, the first coat of epoxy on the first edge. Okay, this is the stuff I'm using and you use a 50-50 mixture. I'll mix it up in there. Here's a little secret that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, when you do epoxy work, you get a lot of little air bubbles in the epoxy, so you, you got to uh, use a torch to melt them out of there. Let's see. See those bubbles? All right, this is the first edge of the sample uh, with the epoxy coating on it. Uh, it's setting up and it should be dry in 24 hours. I'll check in with it later. Okay, here's a sample from last night. It turned out pretty good. It's nice and flat. No um, bumps or ripples or orange peel in the finish. It's clear and mirror-like. Uh, there's a little bit of a ridge here around the edges where the epoxy sticks to the tape uh, dam which could be problematic when having to trim or sand um, the production amounts. You can see here it dripped down a little bit on the side so uh, when doing production, I would probably have to tape off the sides if I'm going to do it this way with this technique. And also, the tape dam doesn't really come out square, as you can see right here. It's kind of rounded, it pulls in, so you have to take a razor blade and kind of square that up. Um, anyway. I'll get to that and I'll pour the resin in here and we'll take a look at this when uh, the next edge dries and then we'll go from there. Okay, I got the second edge epoxied. It's all taped up and uh, setting up. Oh, looks like something landed in it right there. Anyway, we'll let this set up and we'll come back tomorrow and check it out. I'm not sure I'm going to go this way. There seems to be some problems. Um, we'll probably end up just doing the horizontal uh, buildup and then uh, multiple coats. Okay, here it is all uh, dried and set up. So I'm going to peel the tape off and then I'll tape up these two edges and pour the top. And that should be the first part of the uh, dam, the, the tape and dam and pour and turn and all that business. i um, not sure that this is the right way to do this. It may end up being more hassle and more work 
than just trying to build it up uh, on a vertical surface. It's looking like this would be a lot more work to do it this way because this coat that's on real thick would have to be sanded to get these edges down and then recoat it again because there's little things that come through the tape um, epoxy and stuff so all that stuff has got to be dealt with and, and uh, worked and finessed this method might actually take longer than the other method alright here's the final coat on the surface it's taped off and the resin is in there and setting up it should be dry in about 24 hours looks like there's a little sand through on the right side I didn't think it was going to show up that much because sometimes the finish darkens it and kind of ambers the wood but that's kind of noticeable so I'll have to be real careful on the tables to make sure that there isn't any sand throughs like that okay so this is how it turned out it looks like this method is going to be more labor and I'm not really sure that it looks better than doing it the other way. Uh, after this step here I would still have to sand down all these rough edges and then recoat it again um, building the coat up you know like a, the same as the other technique so I might as well just stick with the original technique of uh, doing the tables flat and building the coats up. Lesson learned.